Today's episode is brought to you by the Minnesota Cannabis College, your go-to resource for cannabis education and training in Minnesota. Whether you're just curious or ready to start growing, our courses and workshops are designed to guide you every step of the way. Learn from industry experts, gain real-world insights, and become a part of a community committed to responsible cannabis growth. Ready to elevate your knowledge? Visit mncannabiscollege.org to get started today. Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Northern Lights. I'm your host, Tanner, joined today by John and Steve. Guys, season two. Hey. It's nice to be here. Yeah. We're back. It, it, yeah, I like the new setup. Um, I feel like we're comfier now. What do Definitely. you guys say? Definitely oh, yeah. feeling yeah. comfy on the on the mics at the Dabbler Depot studio in St. Paul. We're back at the Payne Phelan Dabbler Depot seed and sesh. It feels oh, good. Yeah. yeah. It really does. Yeah. It's been a, a busy summer, guys. I mean, we did like a check-in sort of midway over the summer, but so much has happened since then. Um, we got a ton of news to cover today. We've got some products to try. But I mean, before we jump into any of that, guys, the Doobie Dabbler, both of you were there. It was a pretty fun time. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know I needed to jump on like a big bubble. Yeah. <laughs> until I got to the Doobie oh, Dabbler yeah. and there was a big bubble to be jumped on. But like overall, just a great, great new experience for all people who are still exploring the cannabis industry. A lot of the people I talked to, because I was just chatting everyone up, were like pretty new. And they're like, no, uh, don't really know which gummies I like yet. And just like figuring stuff out. And it's like, oh, this is so nice to see. This yeah. is so nice to see something so familiar, like the Minnesota like farm festival yeah. like thing like we all grew up doing. Mm -hmm. And now we get to do it with like legal cannabis. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's cannabis amazing. pushing the boundaries of the Seavers Fall Festival and, mm -hmm. and like the Rena right nearby the Renaissance Festival. We're on that edge. It's September 13th as we record this. We're on that edge of summer and fall. Mm -hmm. And shout out to Dabbler Depot and Verist for trying something new and like doing it on a massive scale. Yes, that's what dude. that's what threw me for a loop at, at the Doobie Dabbler was I got golf carted around. That's how large the festival yes, was. Yeah. Um, you worked as a sponsor and a yeah. vendor with Skull or yeah. Skull, 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 yeah. and we'll talk about them later on yeah. on the show. But talk t talk us through like what Saturday was like, and let's also get into Legacy Cup because that's coming up as well. Yes, and we'll be sponsoring that as well. Saturday was so amazing. Like I got there, I think just after noon, so it was like an hour into the event, and. I had to park. Well, we were parking in a big, big field that was next to a cornfield. <laughs> and I was already, like, down in the field. And I was like, shit, didn't this thing, like, start an hour ago? And there's so many cars here already. Uh, I That's walk awesome. in, see, like, uh, Dr. Dabney, Clem, <laughs> right away. <laughs> and then, like you said, I look down. And it's like, seeing it in, like, bright day, it's like, oh, my God, this place is... There's so much set up, so much to do here. 200 acres worth of fun. Yeah, just like unlike any other cannabis event that we've had so far with like the scale of everything that was happening. Agreed. Yeah, it really was a fun time. And it's funny that you mentioned the Ren Fest. There was one point when I was a few samples in, mm. a few hits on the puff go in, when I saw a couple people in costume walking around and I'm like... What? And I'm like, oh, no, the Ren, yeah, Ren Fest right by here. Yeah, I saw a few elves just kind of be like, yeah. oh, what's going on across the bridge? <laughs> Added to <laughs> the vibe. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I, I I had it described by a friend who went on Friday, and I was like, so how, how was it? I'm coming on Saturday. He described it, well, sort of like a county fair, but yeah. everyone is stoned. Yeah. And yeah. it's like such a true, like, Minnesota vibe to it. I, I mean... It so felt fun fun. so familiar to, like, mm -hmm. things we already do. And uh, one thing I recognized... On Saturday, this place was packed, so many people, mm -hmm. and you, it just wasn't ever loud. Like, everyone was at this, like, really energetic yeah. hush. You know, like, when you're, like, whispering with friends and you're super happy, like, that was, like, the energy level with bands going crazy. Oh, yeah. Uh, they got great, great bands and headlined with Early Eyes, a Minneapolis band. It was mm -hmm. so fun. Yeah, yeah. It's so funny to say that we did a, a live show of cooking with Clem at the community tent, and and 
it was fun getting into it, having like a, a nice size audience and sort of the highest we ever got was like that medium level of excitement of mm. like the, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, we totally want to come check this out. And then a lot of sitting and like nodding and being like, wow. It was just, was everything cool. was so comfortable. It's yeah. like no need to get overexcited. You mm -hmm. kind of can just sit in it. You're like, I'm out, I'm outside. I'm like in the fresh air. Mm -hmm. I have pierogies, anything I want to yeah, eat. Yeah, the food right truck over there. Uh, variety was off the charts. Yeah. Def oh, yeah. They definitely murdered on that. The, uh, the motocross next to the podcast, <laughs> not my favorite place to podcast, I'm going to be honest. But, um, you know, room for improvement next year with... with but, but I yeah, will say... Next year set up by the pro wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Looking out, it's good to see you, Jordan. It's, Jordan's behind, behind the camera. behind. Oh, the, yeah. But um, it was cool looking out and seeing people like do flips in the air. <laughs> so, now, Jordan, you got a mic. I do have a question for you. You were involved in a lot of the production. We were doing the corn maze like near the end of the night. Did someone have to go and like search the corn maze before you guys cleared the grounds? Or how did you make sure there was no one like sampled out just hanging out in there? That's a great question. That's a question I had myself. Um, <laughs> and I found out that there's a nice gentleman named Ray who has been with Seavers for uh, decades at this point. And he basically has made it his own job to just like have one eye on the entrance of the corn maze awesome. all the time. And so I walked up to him. I'm like, Ray, how's it going? He's like, there's 26 people in the corn maze right now. <laughs> All right. And I'm like, thank you, Ray. Amazing. That's amazing, Ray. I had no idea. Hey, shout out, and Ray. And so Ray, Ray is the guy that you, uh, you want lifeguarding the corn maze because <laughs> he's always got at least one eye, maybe two. On I it. It. Well, shout out, Ray. I mean, that, that's awesome. Yeah. I'd like Help him keep people safe. To make another point of like everyone who put you, there were so many people you saw like throughout this event, like keeping it together. Mm -hmm. As I said, in a massive field outside, like so much that could be unpredictable. Coordinated like, t-shirts, volunteers, yeah. parking lot staff. It was just so well run. Everything was so well coordinated. I think you guys really knocked that out the park. Like there was no logistical hangups that Anyone can see. I know there always yeah. is, but yeah, behind the scenes. I mean, right. yeah, you guys, uh, you're not aware of the fires that are perpetually <laughs> burning yeah, that yeah. we are all running around. Uh, yeah. It's very rare that we as staff get to enjoy the event, which is unfortunate because we're just uh, going from this to that and that to this. Right. So, right. But uh, for a first-time event, we couldn't be more enthused and encouraged. Uh, it's, it's not all the time that a first-time event goes well and yeah. is successful uh it, it, it can be a do or die with with events especially post covid so we were really really thrilled um, truly a, a a massive baby birthed by verist and dabbler depot yeah, we uh we were hard at work uh pretty much since about april we've been pumping this thing out and making sure it happened this is my first time ever scheduling entertainment like me and sam <laughs> uh what a, one of my colleagues and event coordinators we had never scheduled a music festival before and granted this wasn't a music festival it was a community festival cannabis <laughs> culture festival that music was there but mm -hmm. well, some of the best feedback we got was that uh the music was so good and like even the artists so were good. like this is our favorite this was the best vibe show we've ever played this is our favorite Damn. venue we've ever played even though like numbers weren't massive of like standing in front of a stage there was still, again, like that medium level of enthusiasm that was like the most any of us could muster. But it's like, that's the vibe of the event was just like, yeah, yeah I am. I am enjoying music. I'm it's not like, this. Woo, like <laughs> yeah. freaking out about artists, but it's like, wow, this is really good music. Yeah. This is really good entertainment. This is fun motorcycle. Well, and music and cannabis go so well together that I think it really makes the point that like festivals need to have music. Cannabis festivals need to have a music component, mm -hmm. which we're going to see tomorrow. You know, we're recording this ahead oh. of Legacy Cup, but... That's probably the biggest thing that people are talking about right now is Lupe Fiasco, Dessa. I mean, these are mainstream uh, chart-topping artists that have really been around, especially for folks that are, you know, on that millennium or older Gen Z. Um, Lupe Fiasco for millennials is is really right Massive. there. Like he he had such a run with uh, Superstar and you are you know and like Kanye and Touch the Sky mm -hmm. and like and he's. Like you come to find out further on, like Lupe Fiasco is, uh, he's a street, he's a, he's well respected in the Chicago streets, mm -hmm. but he had that crossover appeal and he's still putting out music, which I think is awesome. Yeah. He's been making and performing music for like almost two decades now. And it's like still getting the massive hype 
for uh, this concert tonight, and I cannot wait. Cannot wait. Well, and it, you know, just to like combine Doobie and Legacy, like Minnesota and the cannabis industry in Minnesota is pushing the boundaries, mm -hmm. and the industry itself within it is pushing. And yeah, it was a lot to bite off. It was six months of work across multiple teams producing the Doobie Dabbler. And Legacy Cup is in its fifth year. And they partnered with uh, Sue McLean Agency to really build out their structure on the organization side when it came to organizing all the aspects of music and competition and vendors, sponsors. And we're seeing this industry grow right, right in front of our eyes. Yeah. And we're a part of it, too. That's super exciting. Yeah, it's fun we get to talk and be a part of it, yeah. I'm going to proudly bring my Legacy 3 cup uh, bag mm, to the There bathroom. you go. <laughs> I had my Legacy 4 hoodie on yesterday. <laughs> yeah. oh. Just in time for Legacy 5. <laughs> there we go. Well, guys, should we jump into the news? We've got yeah. a lot to cover. Lot where, do, where are we going to start? Well, so we're going to talk a little bit about some tribal businesses that are expanding in the industry. We're going to talk about Minneapolis and St. Paul, looking at what city regulations might look like in adult use. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, a mayor that we talked about a couple months back who got arrested, who oh, is now off the hook. And then, uh, but really the first I story. I want to hear about that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's going to be a fun one. All right. So the first story that we're digging into today, since we last recorded, we have had that application process for social equity, that first round of people seeking business licenses in the cannabis industry, mm -hmm. open and close. And guys, the numbers of people that applied was actually really surprising to me. Yeah. So let's dig into it. So first off, we had 2,307 people that were verified as social equity applicants. And that was a pretty short window. That was a couple weeks, oh, uh, yeah. a window where you yeah. had to get your application verified. Yeah. yeah. So people knew that it was coming, but I think there were a lot of people that had that open and go, oh, well, I'm just going to reach out to the government and get some copies of my court records, only to realize, oh, some of those were not actually as easily accessible. Yeah, I was going to say, I spoke with some people who were trying to find either their own arrest records or arrest records of family members for things I haven't thought about in almost a decade. And yeah, it, it was, um, it was a complicated process, but I do think the state, the state had enough outs where I, I getting 23 people in. Yeah. I think we, I think most, most everyone who wanted to see if they were social equity applicants got, into that verification process. Yeah. Like I, I I'm curious, do you know the number of the total who were who even checked? Do we know how many people checked to verify? So honestly, we, we got the vast majority of people that came through. I believe there were only See, about two hundred that didn't. That's what I that that's what I thought. I felt like they made it clear enough and I hope we helped make it clear enough on the show talking about it every week that like this is who can and can't. So hopefully everyone feels like it was a fair process. Yeah. So that was the sort of that first initial phase that we saw people getting verified as social equity applicants. Yeah. But I think the one that everyone was really waiting for was actual business licenses. Yeah. People throwing their hat into the ring. And remember, this round also comes with that early growing. If you get that micro, mezzo, or the cultivator license, mm -hmm. you might be able to be some of the first people growing adult use cannabis in Minnesota. And we saw 1,817 applications come in for those business licenses, but there's only... 280 licenses that yeah. are going to be given out With across all the different types, types. all the categories and uh, yeah. micro licenses are uncapped so it kind of yeah so we saw a, a cap round one just on how many of the social equity ones are given out to yeah. 100 but yeah you're right that moving like onward there's no all these people cap written in statute yeah around. Yeah, but it was super interesting. So I helped a couple people go through the application process, mm -hmm. was able to sort of watch the numbers ticker up. I'm really proud I was able to be part of Mezzo application number one, zero, zero, one. Amazing. I thought that was cool. Yeah. Um, helped someone do like a retail license that came in around like 120. Helped with a micro license near the end of the process that came in around like 250, 260. Um, so then seeing some of the final numbers come out, it was like, mm. wow. Um, so let's. Let's jump sure. into those. I mean, right away, I love the license, like the wholesaler, mm -hmm. the transporter, the, the testing facility, ones where they're basically guaranteed a license as long as they're uh, approved by the state. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, if you're in one of those categories where they're not going to require a lottery, mm -hmm. that's got to get you just thinking, I, I got to get my things together. I'm, yeah. I'm hoping yeah. for the best here. Uh, you know, 
We'll leave names out of it, but there's a few folks that I'm super excited for. Absolutely. You and I, I think, are both thinking of some similar people, especially on the transporter side, that we're Mm -hmm. especially looking at this as perhaps an entry point, maybe throwing their hat into the ring and hoping. Now, seen based on the numbers, as long as you did your due diligence in the application, you've got your license. That must be pretty exciting. That's an empowering feeling Mm -hmm. for them because... Right now, as John alluded to earlier, like we are sort of in this waiting zone where yeah. we're, people aren't sure. But if you're in one of these three categories and you feel like your team pre- prepared the, the application properly, that's a, a head start in itself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So shout out, to, shout out to those who are really getting after it. Yeah. Now let's take a look at the other licenses. So if you applied for a micro license, they're going to give 100 out this first round. Mm-hmm. You have roughly one in six odds of getting a license. Now looking at some other states... Not terrible odds, you know, that's, that's not terrible. Yeah. B- but I think uh, not ideal to be a business owner with like, well, one in six chance that I get to move forward in the way that I want to here. You've you know? applied, you've spent the money, you've prepared, you've, and about a third of all the license requests were micro businesses. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. So it was a popular category. Yeah. On the mezzo business side, you have about a one in 16 chance of getting that. Um, I actually feel really bad because I had people asking me and I said, well, I think probably Mezzo is going to be your best odds because it's a pretty expensive license. And I think most people are just going to go for a micro. And then to see that, it was like, oh, well. Yeah, on paper, it looks like micro is going to be the competitive one. But I think uh, the leeway that people get with Mezzo Mm -hmm. and like just the ability to grow quickly and take more market cap is why. I think people were like, okay, if I know I can be ready early, I might as well go for a bigger license. Totally fair. Sure. Totally for yeah. those who might not know, can you explain the difference between micro and meso? Yeah, for sure. So a micro business is sort of a vertical business where you can grow, you can process, you can sell, but you're capped on how much you can do that. So mm-hmm. 5,000 square feet of growing, you know, you're only allowed to process like a, an equal amount of that. Yeah, only one retail store. Mezzo is sort of like three times of everything. You mm-hmm. can have three times the amount of growth space. You can have twice the amount of outdoor growth space. You can have three locations. It just sort of allows you to do the same type of thing, but a lot more of it. Yeah. One big difference, though, is that micro business will be allowed to have on-site consumption, whereas as of right now, mezzo businesses won't be able mm-hmm. to. So mm-hmm. micros will be a lot more of like that craft hangout lounge kind of place. Sure. Um, mezzo businesses might be more closer to like your typical dispensary chain wow um let's keep going yeah yeah so uh cultivator super really really important especially in that early phase one in four odds if you applied for that license manufacturer one in seven odds retailer this is where it gets really tricky again one in 15 um are your odds of getting that roughly and same on delivery one in 15 um, and then so our other, our three best ones, wholesale transport and testing, where if 100%. you did your license right, yep, you should get your light, you should get it, yeah. yeah. If you did your application right, yeah. Yeah. Now I've got a lot of opinions on some of these numbers, um, but first we're gonna take a very short break. Are you looking to reach a passionate audience in the cannabis community? The Northern Lights Podcast, brought to you by the Minnesota Cannabis College, is the perfect place to showcase your brand. With over 8,000 downloads and 22,000 YouTube views, our listeners are engaged and eager to learn more about cannabis culture. Whether you're a business, advocate, or an entrepreneur, we have sponsorship packages to fit your needs. Don't miss this opportunity to support Cannabis Education Minnesota while growing your brand. Reach out to us at steve at mncannabiscollege.org and let's make something great together. And we're back. So, guys, I had said that I had a lot of opinions on this. Mm-hmm. And there was some other numbers that we didn't share before the ad break that I think really helped to illustrate how this might shake out for people. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to be optimistic because that's just, we're back. It's a new season. I got to be optimistic. But but let's also talk about this. Yeah. Just over 50% of applications had Minnesota addresses as their address, hmm. meaning mm. the majority, or the, excuse me, just uh, just around the, maj- the 50% yeah. of businesses were Arizona, Missouri, other mm. states applying for a license here in Minnesota. The other thing that I want to throw in is that I was really excited that if you applied for a testing license, it's guaranteed. Yep. They had scheduled to have 50 licenses available. If they only had five people apply, 
And that is like the most critical, like every single product that's going to go get sold has to go through a testing place. Yep. So the fact that we had 10% of the available license, even just like expressed as interest, not actually opening their doors, not actually starting, but just like throwing their hat into the ring. And these are adult use concerning. cannabis or marijuana products that can't cross state lines. No. no. So yeah. your hemp products, we're going to try some in a little bit. You can send those to Florida if you want to test them. The adult use flower that you grow, you cannot. Up to yeah. our borders. I think that's a great opportunity, though, for December with people looking at these being like, hey, I didn't know. Even I think about like the, uh, was it 500 people who were verified but didn't even put in an application? It's like they can look at these numbers and be like, okay, where where do I fit in? So, like, as scary as that may be, because we're going to give out all these cultivating licenses and five testing licenses, hopefully um, we have entrepreneurs looking in and f filling in that gap because yeah. that will be one that can only hurt the whole industry if we have product that's out there that's untested, yeah. yeah. Now, I wonder if there's, like... You know, we talk a lot about the medical companies or the medical companies are referenced, but there is there are testing facilities in Minnesota that are currently doing testing for the medical companies. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that though that th that company or those companies, I forget how many there are, mm -hmm. they would be primed to really just continue to expand their business and move into recreational. And they're already doing a great job or they're not making the news so they're you know they're <laughs> hopefully doing a great job. <laughs> a job but like michigan has had issues with testing like there are states where testing has really gone awry um yeah. and so yeah I, I definitely hear you i also think one thing to note is like there were only 38 retailer licenses but when you multiply the meso by three and the micro by one we're looking at quite a bit of retail coming online mm -hmm. yeah. just in this yeah, first so. round mm -hmm. um, and that's like, exciting it's exciting but then if we if we want to look at, you know, the tribes and I know we're going to get there, but like we're going to have a lot of cannabis very quickly. And I wonder where the price of cannabis is going is to, it going to be? start yeah. when we, when we go live with over a hundred retailers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's sure going to be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were talking offline, Jordan and I before, and I think the, the biggest takeaway that I had is I think on the, the short time scale, like within the next six months, it's not good that we didn't have a low amount of, such a low amount of testing facilities. But I agree with you that I think long-term, I think this is a problem that will eventually solve itself. Mm -hmm. I think, like you said, the testing facilities for the medical companies probably weren't applying for social equity licenses. Oh, so hopefully we have too. such it a large influx social. later on. Yeah, this is just that pre-approval process. That's right. It's so hopefully by the time doors open, we have so many more licenses given out. but And it's not a head start. It's just a pl planning process yeah. for some of these licenses. Before everybody else. Yep. Yeah. 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 So let's talk about some next steps because that's really all the information we have right now. They release right. the numbers. We don't know exactly where things are going I, from here. We uh, don't know when the lottery will be announced. No. Nope. Unfortunately, not yet. No. So here's what we... So as of right now, the, the lottery cannot happen until every single application has been vetted. Mm -hmm. So we're sort of in this holding period where they're going through, they're vetting these applications, they're saying they're doing it as quick as possible. What's nice is the requirements to vet them was pretty low, where it's just sort of checking to make sure they meet the minimum qualifications. And the max, like word count for these categories was like 4,000 words, like a, a really sort of small amount. Um, Can we get your honest feedback, not opinionated, but just like yeah. some of the most surprising aspects of the application? Yeah. yeah, I think I was most surprised by, and I, and I hope this doesn't come across like disrespectfully, but, but like by how little you really needed to do mm -hmm. to be able to apply for a license. Mm -hmm. You needed to fill out a lot of PDFs, which, mind you, for someone who's maybe not super technologically literate, could have taken a decent amount of time. Are you an acrobat? Uh, <laughs> I, I've I've tinkered in acrobat a decent amount, where PDFs are not super challenging for me. Um, and so, coming up with four thousand words to describe a security plan when they're just looking for really general information, um, I think if someone sat down, they could have completed an entire application with no business plan in mind in probably an afternoon. Mm -hmm. And I think looking at places like Arizona, where you had applications that were a thousand plus pages of designs, specs, here's the exact technology we're gonna use. I, like some people applied, 
they didn't even have to really provide much information about the facility other than, well, we hope it to be around this size. We hope it to be all of this. And that all changes later when it's no longer social equity. But I think I was very surprised by like a lot of work and prep went into preparing people and I'm glad they prepared their business plans, but on the application side, probably didn't. Wow. Yeah, yeah I hear you, hmm. right? Because you didn't know how serious to take the pre-planning nope. until the application until came out. Until you're looking at it, yeah. Absolutely. And you, I mean, maybe there's some folks that woke up uh, in July and decided to get into the cannabis industry, but a lot of these folks have been diligently thinking and strategizing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so I'm sure for, for people that had put in all of that effort and time, it took a little bit more to think about how am I going to adapt my business to the actual application itself? But for someone who, I'm thinking of one person in particular who, who came to me and was looking for some advice with a licensure, who just sort of, you know, wanted to throw their hat into the ring and mm -hmm. thought, ah, worst case scenario, I get a license and I, I can't use it. And yeah. like, all right, that's not the worst place to be. <laughs> um, Worst case scenario, I paid 500 bucks and didn't get a license. Right. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> um, and so it, it, I think I was most surprised by how someone the with very little business plan could probably get a license. Hmm? Yes. And thanks for sharing. Yeah. I think about, you know, you brought up Arizona and a 1,000 pages for an application, how yeah. uh, burdensome that could be for, for folks. And if they caught wind that Minnesota had an easy application or a more simple application, we don't know what their situation if they were if it worked out in arizona maybe they have part of the puzzle figured out and they're willing to relocate mm -hmm. there's all these things Absolutely. much was decided before you were here you know so some of these folks are maybe picking up from the picking up the pieces in arizona and saying oh i'm gonna move north there's a better opportunity in minnesota and like from that perspective you kind of have to have compassion for yeah. folks who are still dreaming of getting into the industry some way somehow and we've seen licenses in other states sell for over a million dollars. Yeah. So I'm sure there were people Ooh. thinking, yeah, 500 bucks, worst case scenario, I flip it. You Without flip reading yeah. everything in the bill. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But like finding I'm another SEA. I'm just SCA. seeking investment, John. Just Do you finding want to invest another in 35% of my business? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm too busy investing in 9%. Oh, uh, there we go. Yeah, every, business. every business. Every yeah. <laughs> business. Oh. Wow, what nines. a throwback. Yeah. <laughs> to the nine. All right, well, let's move on. Uh, more to come on that. OCM, I'm excited to hear sort of how many applications make it through. I'm excited to hear when that lottery is. Can I say one more thing? Oh, please Just do. to kind of go yeah, off please. Steve's yeah. point there is like, I, one thing I, f like with that, how simple the application is like, and half the people taking these, or filing these applications being from out of state, it's like there is... Yeah, I'm interested to see who's going to open up first. Like, yeah. who's actually going to be opening up if half of the people applying aren't even here yet? It's oh, like, yeah. <laughs> like, what is your time? What is your timeline? We want dispensaries 2025 for real. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's just the well, pieces. And, and it, imagine like the affiliations and the and all the work done behind the scenes. Like, we we don't know the entanglements of these opportunities, and so. <laughs> Yeah, like, I made that 9% joke, but that's like real. It's, it's <laughs> very really much real. real. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think it's just like, it, it'll be so interesting to see five years from now mm -hmm. how this ends up shaking out. Because mm -hmm. I, I agree with you where it's possible that we do have out-of-state people getting licenses that 18 months from now haven't done anything with it. And there goes their license. Sure. And Never used like, it. Yeah. We won't really remember that five, six years from now. Mm. But being in the muck of it. It feels weird. Like all the Delta 8 brands that I don't see anymore. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's take a quick break and come back and talk because I'm uh, tribal business. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Are you looking to reach a passionate audience in the cannabis community? The Northern Lights podcast, brought to you by the Minnesota Cannabis College, is the perfect place to showcase your brand. With over 8,000 downloads and 22,000 YouTube views, our listeners are engaged and eager to learn more about cannabis culture. Whether you're a business, advocate, or an entrepreneur, we have sponsorship packages to fit your needs. Don't miss this opportunity to support Cannabis Education Minnesota while growing your brand. Reach out to us at steve at mncannabiscollege.org and let's make something great together. Alrighty, and we're back. So 
Guys, there was a lot of news that happened over the summer, but some things that I've really been watching is the tribal businesses that have continued to expand and keep growing and selling cannabis throughout the state of Minnesota. Right. Yeah. Some of the more popular tribal businesses right now, Red Lake Nation, yep. White Earth, those two are both uh, growing. Yeah. And then we've talked about Island Peze on the show, which is the Treasure Island Resort um, yep. and mm -hmm. Casino. Uh, <laughs> and then we've got Walker, which is Sweetest Grass. So we're up to, what, four? Yep. Um, I know Shakopee's working on a cannabis uh, operation. And then in then we're also seeing Boyce Ford. It's two uh, more, yeah. Mille Lacs Band of Ojibwe, soon to announce their brand and cannabis venture. Uh, so we're up to almost like six I, or seven. I kind of yeah. love the dual track of um, all the nations getting their plans ready as we give out licenses in the rest of Minnesota. It's kind of, yeah. that's super fun. Like we're going to, I feel like it's going to go from no cannabis to like, which dispensary are we trying to go to? Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, also, totally. the Lower Sioux, was, they were building hemp houses. They got some coverage in the news this summer, and they're going to keep building hemp houses. And shout out to hemp yeah. houses. That's awesome. Well, and we're also seeing the expansion of not just dispensaries Ooh. on tribal lands, but also the building of hopefully future dispensaries off of tribal lands. I'll be yeah. going up to Moorhead in a couple of weeks. Going to homecoming for Concordia. Oh, and, um, we saw White Earth Nation build their first, or start to build their first off-land dispensary that would be right in Moorhead, right on that border with North R Dakota. Makes so much wow. sense. They border towns are going to be increasingly popular for dispensaries because you can tap into Minnesota, you can tap into South Dakota. Uh, I find some irony in like a defunct. Uh, beer focused restaurant yeah. being <laughs> overtaken by a cannabis dispensary or a cannabis brand like shows where the culture is in Minnesota. Uh, no more JL beers, bring on white earth nation. Yeah. Uh, and then their brand is a little bit more on the harder to pronounce side, right? The flower that they will big on mash kiki. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 And even that, mash I, kiki. yeah, definitely right. That, in. That correct me if I'm very wrong, clear. I, I've, pronunciation. I've, I've, <laughs> When, when that brand's name was first rolled out, I looked at that and I went, oh, I'm so excited to talk about that on the podcast, and I really want to get it right. Wabigawan Mashkiki is how I believe it's pronounced. And Good here's what so. they're saying. Thank you. The sooner the better, if they can get the state to get the compacts finalized, yep. they're wanting to open uh, as, uh, like you said, John, around the same timeline as social equity mm -hmm. licenses yeah. being awarded. Mm -hmm. And like that's... That's kind of a complicated one, uh, the uh, s structure of these compacts and how they're going, especially now that it's going to be negotiating compacts for off-tribal land. Right. I wonder, yeah, I wonder if they're going to go back and change some of the early ones signed and who is who is overseeing these. Like Tim Walls is <sighs> not here. Timmy. Timmy's <laughs> uh, been busy. We don't have a permanent OCM director. So who's doing this? Now is imagine, my question. You know, yeah. hypothize. Uh, Harris Wall win the election in November. Peggy Flanagan then becomes the governor. Mm -hmm. uh, she would be the first female native nat governor in the entire country. In the entire country. Yeah. So you Holy would expect shit. more favorable rules for the tribes. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, uh, yeah, I agree with you. It's been, I was, you know, flipping through episodes from season one, getting ready for us to start season two. And I was looking back and like, Oh yeah, Aaron Dupree. I remember where she was named. And I was like, Oh, that was almost a year ago. <laughs> like, Any day. We're now. coming up to a long time. And that date of, Oh, we'll have someone named by May and in office by June. I don't know guys. It's, my calendar doesn't agree with that. What one year is it? Uh, yeah. the, uh, the Aaron Debris debacle <laughs> is less than a year old mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah. Wow. Dude, right? Feels like a decade. The ago. emergency <laughs> podcast with you, Marcus, and Tanner. <laughs> yeah. Like over Zoom. Yep. Yeah. Hilarious. Yeah. Um, and then I do just want to give a shout Tanner's out. Tanner's interview with her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, people can like, go watch that on our YouTube page. We 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 had a wonderful conversation over over uh, Zoom. It was really cool to hear her perspective on things and uh, subscribe to our YouTube. Yeah, definitely. I encourage people to check that out. But yeah, I, I have to give a quick shout out to to Boys Fort. So so they're coming definitely. out with this new brand. I love seeing all the different names of people's dispensaries, and they've announced that their company's brand name is going to be Ishkode. I believe I'm pronouncing that Hell right. Yeah, which is the Ojibwe word for fire. Expect oh, so good. Expect what? to be able to go <laughs> yeah. and get some Ishkode up in Ely, which, as you mentioned off camera, is the 
furthest north uh, cannabis dispensary in the country yeah, I believe so. when it opens, allegedly. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> they're targeting uh, a Halloween open date. Very cool. From what I hear. Very cool. Yeah, I... This is going to be, we're going to have a very interesting fall. Absolutely. Yeah. We are. yeah. It's been so cool to watch all this come out. And uh, I, I do have to just say one quick thing before we move on to talking about Minneapolis and St. Paul. Um, I was considering a drive to Island Pese the other day. Mm -hmm. I actually hadn't been there since they sort of did their grand opening. I was like, well, you know, I'm going to be down in that part of the state. It might be fun to stop by. Like, let's take a look at their menu. Concentrates? None. Vape carts? None. Flower. When I looked in the morning, they had one type that left only as an eighth. Wow. When I looked in the afternoon, none. Somebody bought it. Yeah. So that means, yeah, exactly. Demand so that of. means if you walk into a dispensary, you're like, wow, I get to go to the dispensary. It's right near the tribal nation. You might walk in and they just have edibles. Yes. And, and they might it. just have our edibles. Yeah. yeah. The yeah five they edibles. don't have anything higher than five milligrams no. per serving. And from what I've heard from the company, they don't plan to. At um, Island Pese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're just planning to follow Minnesota's rules, which currently allow five milligram per edible. And so Walker, I know, is going to be bumping up to a 20 milligram edible. Mm -hmm. uh, so they'll be rolling out a slightly higher grade uh, milligram or higher yeah. milligram edible, which, you know, may turn the needle for some folks. Uh, but I think at Walker right now you can buy a 250 milligram edible. Ah. It's five servings. Oh, but uh, oh, oh. I, yeah. so you can get the, you can get the, Big edibles that up in Leech Lake. Yeah, up there. Yeah. I sent a wedding party to uh, Island Pezzi. I, I, I hope they got there at a good time. Good time. <laughs> yeah. Did you, did you oh. get them a gift card or what do you mean? <laughs> no, they were like, where can we buy weed here? And oh, I was like, God. well, about 40 minutes out of St. Paul. Uh, yeah. uh, fun fact, my SEO right now for Canna Connect is uh, d d uh, generating like people calling me asking if I'm open. Like. Oh, they're, okay, for sure. They're, they're yeah. thinking that Canna Connect is a dispensary. <laughs> so oh. that's been kind of funny to do. They're like showing up to the wilderness and like wondering where the, the door is. Steve, if you want to transition, <laughs> I would go to the Canna Connect to get my Canna. That word. Yeah, I mean, connect. I didn't apply. Uh, we'll, we'll get back to the yeah, news. We'll, we'll circle uh, back. Yeah. We'll circle back, back later. <laughs> but Ishkode, I could see myself using that in like colloquial speak. Like yeah. if, if you hit me up with a great idea, I might just hit you back with Ishkode. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. That's a good one. All right. The tale of two cities, guys. Mm. We've seen a lot of early cannabis regulations start to trickle out from the state on that rule side. We saw the first draft come out. We hope to see another draft early part of this fall. Um, but we've seen a lot of action on that city side. Mm -hmm. Cities starting to figure out what does regulation look like? What are some of the rules that we're going to use? And Minneapolis and St. Paul are two great examples of two cities going in very different directions. Yes. Um, so let's sort of dig into that a little bit. We're here in St. Paul. Yeah. And I got to say, if I was a cannabis business, this based is on the rules now, I'd probably yeah. want to be in St. Paul. Yeah. Now, let's reference that the St. Paul City Council is uh, newly elected. Yep. Mm -hmm. All women, yes. a wide range of ages, and skewing a little bit more towards the younger side. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing uh, probably the most progressive city council that St. Paul has put together ever. Yeah. And I think it's reflected in this. If we dig into it, uh, they're considering new rules for that would open up 90% of the city's current retail yeah. to be cannabis friendly. Yeah. That's Which is huge. Really cool. The only really major restriction that would be in place is that you can't have a dispensary within 300 feet of a school. Except in the downtown Except area. Except downtown. Yeah. Which, Which I guess makes I, sense. Yeah, that's... But the, the rest of the city, that's sort of one of the major limitations of where you'd be able to open a dispensary. Mm -hmm. Which is really exciting. Yeah. Looking at certain neighborhoods, there are certain parts of the, the city where you have like 200, 300 some parcels that could all be dispensaries legally under the city's rules. Which is really cool to see a city taking, as you said, such a progressive approach to welcoming cannabis into the city. Yeah. And, and we know as a St. Paul resident, and we were talking about St. Paul property taxes, like we need all the help we can get right now to raise mm -hmm. funds for the city of St. Paul. And I mean, for Minneapolis as well, they're going through it likewise. Yeah. But cannabis as an industry is an opportunity for the city to raise money yeah. for everything that the city needs. I, I was about to say, as I also live in St. Paul, and they've been doing a lot of projects. Like they... We have the housing tax. There's a 1% sales tax they put up, but they've replaced all lead pipes in all the homes mm -hmm. in St. Paul. And I think it's just really 
trying to be as open and as like game to new revenue as possible because everything I've seen from living there is like they have a vision of what they'd like the city to look like and they don't think they're there yet and it'd be so cool to see cannabis like deeply interwoven into yeah. what the city becomes yeah well and i always i mean going back years of us talking about like a draft model bill and thinking about micro businesses i pictured one building people growing processing and selling cannabis all under one roof mm -hmm. now obviously not everyone has to do that but i think on a small enough scale that's such a cool experience mm -hmm. for a consumer mm -hmm. In St. Paul, that would be possible. You'd be able to grow in all of these places where you have a retail space. There are some restrictions you'd have to have in place to make sure, like, people around you aren't constantly smelling cannabis, whatever sure. reasonable restrictions. Um, but looking at Minneapolis, which is a very different model, they're restricting growing to just the commercial processing zones, which is a tiny fraction mm. of the state or of the city. Yeah. The me. weird parts of the city is yeah, what I call it's, it. It's <laughs> the, the deeply industrial. It's away from everyone else. Probably yeah. around 10% of the city huh. you'd be able to grow in. The rest of it, sure, you can have a micro business there. You'd be able to sell cannabis, but you can't actually grow in that same building because of the smell. That's really the main concern is, is that they're worried about people having to deal with the smell of cannabis. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, yeah. So St. Paul handled that interestingly earlier in this year yeah. when they passed uh the resolution call back yeah. yeah whereas like you can't smoke outside in front of businesses right but yeah. we also have no means of enforcement but we're telling you we don't want you smoking in front of businesses mm -hmm. it's just like just make it like For a sure. social thing like i wonder <laughs> if those citations ever got uh <laughs> yeah. ever got written oh we do have to follow up on that <laughs> we, yeah we that's <laughs> a good question because they didn't exist at the time there right? was Remember? no yeah there was no. well and i i haven't heard of any i believe that it required uh, this is coming back a couple of months but i believe it required like an actual city charter change to allow that to happen and that i don't think it's happening this november well so. the city council changed and so any so we've we the city council became more progressive mm -hmm. so the likelihood of of that happening probably got brushed by the wayside yeah um, so, I, yeah, I'm just super curious to see. I will link both the St. Paul and the Minneapolis draft uh, city ordinances in the show notes. So check those out if you want to read them personally. But it will be really interesting to see, like, actually the, growing cannabis smell. Yeah. Like, you know, not even like the smoked cannabis. Do you guys, smell. Do you guys like, know what business has the most amount of smell complaints reported every year to the city? Of, of all the businesses? All the types of businesses. The Sriracha factory what, in what do you that think, one Jordan? town. Not, oh, not, not brewing. No, no, that's a really good guess. It's, it's barbecue because Complaints? they're constantly cooking meat. Now guys, yes, I will say, say it, yeah. as a vegetarian, if I lived above a barbecue, I would not be a fan of like my house always smelling like cooked meat. Now I can understand someone <laughs> saying the same about cannabis, but they're not passing ordinances saying, Hey, barbecue is got to be only in commercial areas mm. there are smells that exist out in the yeah, world the smell is but not cannabis specific that's yeah. why it's like what's why the sunny crazy? quote like hmm, strange world lots of smells and yeah. like <laughs> it's true like and i'm sorry you can smell cannabis but like someone is doing something in the commercial property next to you like welcome to living in an urban area like, you know cannabis isn't the first industry that's had their issues with the city of minneapolis as it relates to um where they can operate Food trucks have really had mm, a battle with the city of Minneapolis. And in fact, there's one food truck in particular, a barbecue food truck, mm. that used to uh, camp out outside of Umbibilis mm. in northeast Minneapolis, and they had their smoker outside of their food truck. Mm -hmm. Okay, for sure. And the city of Minneapolis shut them down because it is illegal to operate a business outside. Mm. And so that mm, came for up sure. for uh, the sauna company that I that I support and that I go to Embrace North where they were operating their sauna outside and they got shut down mm -hmm. and then Boom and Barbecue uh, which is no longer in in uh, business they were operating their smoker outside but what's funny to bring it back to cannabis is you can grow cannabis outside yeah uh, outdoors yeah but the just city. not with the license <laughs> yeah well and <laughs> soon enough you will but that's just fascinating because like I know of a uh CBD hemp uh, grower in Northeast Minneapolis mm -hmm. that's operating and has been for years. So. And 
he's not getting wild complaints from his neighbors. Like no. they're they're happy to have him, and he's brought in more cannabis businesses into that building. So, yeah. um, I really hope that they reexamine this and actually look at the hemp industry to inform their decisions around cannabis businesses. Mm-hmm. I think you and I are thinking of the same business operator, and if that business operator go to look up their address on the parcel, they are just on the right side of the street. Mm-hmm. He'd be able to keep growing there if he got a commercial license across the street. Unfortunately, not commercial enough. Is it's, he on the border? It's, it's right, at, uh, right on the border of zoning types. He's, zo- he's deep oh. in Minneapolis, yeah. but the other side of the city is zoned only commercial. I he's in PR1, which allows a lot of that, that growing. And it's, it's ridiculous. What I think the real winners here are going to be the properties right along the border of St. Paul and Minneapolis, mm-hmm. because you're going to be able to operate businesses unlike what you'll be able to do in Minneapolis. You'll just have to cross over a street like so i mean we're coming off just off the state fair we're talking about like pierce butler route Mm -hmm. and la como like near that como area the Mm -hmm. st paul park or st anthony park all of that commercial all of that industrial near the u of m Mm -hmm. um all right guys i got a separate business idea (laughs) it's called we grow okay it's we work for cannabis (laughs) growers all right cut this cut this Are you looking to reach a passionate audience in the cannabis community? The Northern Lights Podcast, brought to you by the Minnesota Cannabis College, is the perfect place to showcase your brand. With over 8,000 downloads and 22,000 YouTube views, our listeners are engaged and eager to learn more about cannabis culture. Whether you're a business, advocate, or an entrepreneur, we have sponsorship packages to fit your needs. Don't miss this opportunity to support cannabis education in Minnesota while growing your brand. Reach out to us at steve at mncanvascollege.org and let's make something great together. And we're back. All right, so we have one more story we want to talk to you before we dig into some trying some products, and I am stoked for this last one. Now, people who have been listening to the show for a while, first off, welcome back. We're stoked that you're here for season two. Um, they heard the story about the Winnebago mayor getting arrested and charged with growing hundreds of plants of cannabis in a greenhouse the people's mayor yeah <laughs> when we were talking about this story w- there was like no way that we thought this guy would get away with it oh my god no i remember hearing uh, so yeah let's tell this story because i remember hearing oh this guy got arrested oh those are the facts oh sorry dude um so last this, guy in cannabis in jail for cannabis in minnesota is what i thought it's gonna be yeah, this guy it's for real so he was the mayor they had a greenhouse uh, the investigators reached out and said, hey, we'd love to come and check out your greenhouse. And very mysteriously, some plants were seen leaving the property. Now, it, we're not making allegations that can't be substantiated here, but who knows what those plants could have been, but they were not there when it the was, investigators It was came. described as commercial-grade greenhouse. Yeah. So whatever yeah. was going on there was uh, at a commercial level, apparently. Yeah, allegedly. absolutely. They're just, allegedly. they're just growing some plants, but not cannabis. And, and the, the investigators no. came, and there wasn't cannabis, and things were mostly fine. <laughs> Up until January of this year. Now, this is when we started becoming aware of really who Scott Robertson was and mm-hmm. reported on this story of the mayor getting caught when investigators showed up at his greenhouse with a search warrant and found 240 cannabis plants wow. growing. That is um, what we call a metric fuck ton of plants. <laughs> That's a lot of plants. Um, you can grow eight at home if you're a caregiver. Sure, 16. Mm. 240 is a little bit more than 16. Um, and so, yeah, we heard this story. We went, well, sorry, dude. Yeah, last person <laughs> in jail for cannabis in Minnesota. We'll see you, yeah. But last week, I've been recording of this, prosecutors have dismissed the case because they aren't able to, quote, prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant violated criminal cannabis cultivation laws. I'd love to be that guy's lawyer. (laughs) Yeah, for reals. Shout out to that guy's lawyer, because whatever he did, blown away. Reach out, sponsor the podcast. We'd love to have Yeah, with the facts, I'm (laughs) wondering. (laughs) So so, so let's explain. Here's (laughs) Here's how they got out of it. A couple different things. One, they used some information on the search warrant that ended up not being correct to the property. So they were mm. looking at power usage that actually wasn't entirely just for the greenhouse. So tick number one, reasonable doubt, yeah, maybe not they totally, added- but questionable. 
Hmm. Now, the other thing, they also use the smell of cannabis in the search warrant, which in Minnesota, you actually can't Not, use yeah. in warrants, in searches of cars or homes. It's you're allowed to have cannabis, and so you can't search for the smell of it. Reminds me of uh, what I would say is like the Marcus Harkis argument. Yeah, mm-hmm. like absolutely. He, he very much is in support of not being able to use that mm-hmm. to uh, arrest somebody. Yeah, yes. absolutely. It's interesting to see it used in a commercial-grade yeah. argument. So then tick number three in the box <laughs> that I guess work. made it so you couldn't prove it was that none of the plants were yet flowering. So Bang. they couldn't prove... That they were cannabis because, you know, as Robertson said, he just planned to destroy the plants prior to flowering. They were just hemp because he wanted to prove that he could grow with the plants moving forward. There we go. Hell yeah. He technically followed the law according to a court of law. Um, That's all I need to hear. (laughs) He followed the law enough that a jury wouldn't look at it and go, yeah, that guy definitely planned to break the law. They would probably just look at that and go. He probably planned mm. to break the law because I look at this, my own personal opinion, not speaking on behalf of the college or you guys, is I would speculate this guy probably planned to break the law. Mm. Um, I don't mm. want to at all put out <laughs> libel as my own thoughts, opinions, my, my own viewpoint. I, I don't know the guy, but he, his, his lawyer said that this was a disgrace and that he just wanted to get back to being a farmer and providing jobs to his local economy. It's hard to argue with jobs. Right. Uh, to argue with jobs. I'd say they, they sort of jumped the gun here. Had they waited a little bit longer, maybe they would have mm-hmm. caught the flower in, or they caught the plant in flowering. It that would have been <laughs> easier to prove. That was my question. I was like, wait, if once they caught them in January, couldn't they just have like, Given it some time, <laughs> can they have confiscated them and be like, "You can't go in that greenhouse"? Oh, but for what like, if those plants in the night again just, just disappeared? <laughs> they walked away. I don't know. I totally agree with you. But I also, it seems sketchy that oh, they weren't flowering, so you can't convict someone for two hundred and forty plants. <laughs> I love how he got away. You like with this? Not got away. He was found innocent. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Using a law that changed while the case was happening. So, like, the police, I feel like we're, like, not even sure, like, how do we enforce this? Which, yeah, totally. honestly, not the worst thing that could happen to the state of Minnesota, that the police don't know how to enforce cannabis laws. Oh, we yeah. could have worse things. Mr. Robertson is very happy to have all of this behind him. And <laughs> Mr. Risk <laughs> is ha- proud to have helped him through the process. I can't disagree. All right, so... Now, we're not taking a political stance here. Again, this is my own personal opinion. The people's opinion. mayor. But if I was to move to Winnebago, I am voting for Scott Robertson for mayor because that's the kind of guy that I want just chilling around the city. The guy who grows 240 plants, the cops come and he goes, ah, man. Yeah. I just and he gets if I away could, with it. Man. Just, just seeing see if, if I, I could. could. Wow. That's wow. a, I, I think I need an edible after yeah, that story. Yeah, yeah, should we do some edibles? No. Um, Providing some jobs. <laughs> so I walked up to the... I know, I know. I can't, I can't so get much. over that. <laughs> He's like, yeah, dude, on that corner is a job. Dude, on that corner is a job. And it's all because of me. Uh, John, tell me, tell me about this product here. This amazing purple package here. Is Skull Doobie Dabbler Dabble Berry. Dabbler <laughs> Berry. I've it's, never had that. We were talking about fruits uh, on Saturday. Yeah, I've never had a Dabbler Berry before, but I'm here to try this. Oh, now, this is come. so cool. I walked up. I had my ticket. I scanned it. They gave me like my cool little wristband. And then I got this inside of a sampler cup. Hell yeah. And I pulled it out and I went, wow, a Doobie Dabbler branded gummy. Like that's so neat. It says right in the back. Limited edition yeah. gummy in honor of the first annual Doobie Dabbler event. I, I would love for you guys to be able to try this, but unfortunately, like, you had to have come to the event. Are there more of these? Well, maybe. maybe. Some more. Um, Are they for sale? Come on down to the Dabbler Depot, and you can uh, oh, give them a sample. They're not. I think you can get some samples. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do we have more? Yeah. <laughs> no, We're back. <laughs> 
Check us out on Instagram. We've YouTube, got a couple gummies. Instagram, so we Facebook. have a few more. Yes. All right. So come on down. You guys can give these a try yourself because we also have cherry freeze. Mm. I'm stoked about this, but I, I, I really wanted to try the dabbler berry. I put it They're in my all bag. Free and I went around, sampled a bunch of stuff, and then I haven't tried this yet. So Five let's milligrams Delta 9. Go. Two milligrams CBC. Five milligrams CBG. This is a daytime edible. It, oh, yeah. It tastes Thank great. Thank you so much for saying that, Steve. Uh, one thing we're really doing with the skull gummies is, like, we want all of them to have CBC because we want people to feel and get to know all the effects of cannabinoids. And, like, you described this perfectly. Like, this one is a daytime gummy. Yeah. And we want to get it to the point where someone, we're, like, our casuals yeah. can, like, look at this and be like, oh, with that amount of CBC, that amount of CBG, this is good for me to take around noon. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it's a big part of it. It's, like, education, like, just through what you're even putting in these things. People are starting to do the math. They're yeah. looking. They're, they're getting there. They're loving that multiple cannabinoid, tri-compound, quad-compound. Like, you know, I'm getting excited for that five-compound. <laughs> I want to get five on it, you know? Give me this. Give me that. Give me that. <laughs> uh, tastes pretty good. Very juicy. Yeah. Very juicy. Yeah. You get a ton of that natural flavor. I was wondering, like, what kind of berry would it taste like? And it's like a conglomeration of, like, a bunch. Like, you get notes of maybe it's raspberry. Like raspberry. Yeah. A little bit of this, a sure, yeah. little bit of that, a little bit. It's a, it's see, a true dabble it's berry. It's a dabble berry. Exactly. Yeah, you can see the picture of it right there. That's what it looks like. That's a, okay. one of All my right. new favorite fruits. You got any You got any member berries? Any <laughs> member berries. I want you guys to try it. Our cherry freeze as well. Ooh, okay. Ooh, so, freeze. do we have any more of the? Ch oh, oh yeah. Here we go. Oh, right. yeah. Me, me yeah well, we'll give this a go. <laughs> there we go. All right, gonna bust this one open. I think we talked about this, but we're starting to see because of that low dose hemp derived market, we're starting to see these collab or these uh, small batch <gasps> products. What I was expecting. Whoa! Uh, wow! I was expecting that classic like red gummy. No. Nope. Wow. That's we froze it. to go. Mm -hmm. Like nowadays, as long as your labeling is correct, you can put out these limited edition, mm -hmm. festival specific products, and I think that's really cool. And it's just so fun because, like, it is just, um, it's just like a taste. It's a taste of something that's been going on for so long. Mm -hmm. but now we're able to. I think it's what's the word? The access. It's so much more totally. accessible. Yep. Um, our regular the four packs of school. That we sell as go bags where we put 20 milligrams of THC in there because mm -hmm. we're like, you don't need 50 milligrams all the time. Sometimes people want to open these and they want to eat the whole thing because yes. it's 12 o'clock and they're headed back to their computer to go work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. I'm going to first have and I'm going to share the whole bag and then we're going to just throw it up, throw it away. Like, there you yeah, go. exactly. On the go. I take it. Wow. These are really and it was, good. Yeah, it was so fun getting to see everyone at Doobie Dabbler. Having these, getting to hear the feedback, and just enjoying enjoying that great event. Yeah, shout out to all the companies that are growing in this industry, that are putting out new products. We're excited to have more product demonstrations on our show and really sample products. So if you've got a great new product, reach out to myself, and we'll work to get you on the show. That's yeah. Steve at MinnesotaCannabisCollege.com. There .org. we go. Dot org. Dot org. Dot org. Dot org. Dot org. Yeah. Dot org, dot org. Yeah. We're a nonprofit. So support the nonprofit, the Minnesota Cannabis College. We do ask for an equal size bag of products, though, because <laughs> we, we're going to do that pour effect in every episode. The though. waterfall. Yeah, it's required. But honestly, though, come come down to Dabbler Depot and get get these. Yeah. <laughs> we should do a promo. Come take them. Yeah. What's, what's your guys' favorite? So you both tried both of them. I think personally for me, that dabbler berry flavor, I really like it. I do love the cherry freeze, but I, I think I, I like like a little bit stronger of a cherry. Mm -hmm. Feels like a little bit uh, more mild, which is good. I, mm. but that dabbler berry, I like. That's real shit, Tanner. I'll say, sorry, I, sorry. first taste, I was a cherry freeze guy, and then through the weekend, as I kept on eating these, I became a dabble berry man. So I, I haven't yeah. tried it yet. I'm gonna try the cherry freeze. It reminds me of the icy machine at the gas station from yeah. mm -hmm. early 2000s mm -hmm. with the polar bear on it. Yeah. I like the flavor of the cherry freeze. I do. Yeah. I'm trying to limit because I'm still going to the Legacy Cup industry night tonight, so I don't want to take too many gummies before I go. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I'll definitely try these later. And oh. both flavors are great. Awesome. Mm. Well, thanks to, to Skull for letting us sample these. John, thanks for... Bringing them in, thanks to the Doobie Dabble, all, all of this. This is, right. this this is, is fun. This is great. It's Thank a party. You yeah. guys for uh, 
being on today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, guys, we're going to share some high thoughts before we wrap up this episode. Oh, I got a good one. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. Are you looking to reach a passionate audience in the cannabis community? The Northern Lights Podcast, brought to you by the Minnesota Cannabis College, is the perfect place to showcase your brand. With over 8,000 downloads and 22,000 YouTube views, our listeners are engaged and eager to learn more about cannabis culture. Whether you're a business, advocate, or an entrepreneur, we have sponsorship packages to fit your needs. Don't miss this opportunity to support Cannabis Education in Minnesota while growing your brand. Reach out to us at steve at mncannabiscollege.org and let's make something great together. All right, y'all. Say it really slow, like since we're high now. Yeah. And I'm hard. we're back. <laughs> well, guys, we've been trying to think of like what's some new flair we can add to this season of the episode, and and uh, you know the whole summer I was getting together with people in in pretty small groups. It was a busy summer, and had so many great conversations while we were just packing a bowl, getting a dab ready. Mm-hmm. You know, so many times that I was like, wow. I should talk about this on the podcast. And then I'd be like, no, no, no. We do like a weed business podcast. Like we can't talk about that. And it's like, no, no, no. Our high thoughts, yes. we do need to bring those oh, to the podcast. So we're going to be ending out every episode by asking people just like, what's something that you've been thinking about this week while well, smoking weed? Um, so ending on a high note? Yeah, just ending on a high note. I, I love that. I like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who wants to go first for the first ever Northern Lights high note? Okay, so... I've been doing more product development mm-hmm. since I since season two, uh, and it's kind of the opposite of what you'd think. But I'm wondering, it's 25 milligrams per serving mm-hmm. for the C's, the the D's, the G's, and the N's. For sure, yeah. But what if we added more gummies per bag? Mm-hmm. Would that 25 milligram still apply? And if we lowered the thc per gummy could we get to a point where we're putting like super cannabinoid rich gummy products out on the market that are low thc and could that appeal to a completely different customer Mm. and could we get to a point where there's just cannabinoid rich gummies and not even thc in the products so i actually saw a product recently that said it was a thousand milligrams and it was because they had 25 pieces and they had uh lowered the THC. Okay. So, and they pumped up everything else. So, okay. it was like a thousand milligrams of cannabinoids plus THC. Yes. Yeah. So, did you see that in St. Paul? Uh, where did I see that thing? It's okay. No, I f- I'm trying to remember. I feel like I saw it either at the Doobie Dabbler mm-hmm. or something I did at the store during this week or a store I went to this so week. So, I'm, I'm just curious. I guess my high thought is on that note. What does the consumer think when they see a thousand milligrams versus the market right now, which is mostly fifty milligrams? Mm-hmm. And would so over time would the consumer be interested in getting cannabinoid rich blends, but it would come at a sacrifice to THC levels? And how long of a window do we have knowing that rent is the, coming? Yeah. And will it last? Will anyone run through that opportunity and and, and execute on it? Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. know. I like good Good high thought. I like where your head's at. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm super curious to see, and especially once we have adult use open up and those caps just get blown by just the wayside. Don't matter. And yeah. you could have super high cannabinoid products that, you know, as long as they abide by the THC limits, are looking like they could be pretty rich in CBD, CBC, CBG, CB. Yeah. Insert letter here. CBL, CBT. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Not heard of that one before, but yeah, yeah, dude, I, 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 I dig that for sure, I and mean, that's pretty cool. That's yeah, I'd, I'd love to just like, and I'm, I can't really say this in, but like, it came up this week for the person with uh, special needs. Mm-hmm. Could CBG, could CBC unlock uh, better um, feelings for these people that struggle with outbursts or struggle with energy? Mm-hmm. Could it calm them in a way, and could we remove the THC out of the product? Would there be a large enough market, and can we design products that are really medically driven or driven to help people with conditions that are hard to diagnose or hard to dose, Mm -hmm. Um, but could we take the psychoactive aspect out of it and help more people? Interesting. Yeah. Nice. I'm excited to see 
sort of what comes in the future of our industry. That's for sure. Minnesota is yeah. just, it's this big ball of Play-Doh, man. man. It's yeah. So cool. With, with our hemp and cannabis, it is really just like, what can we do? <laughs> what can't we do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 240 plants. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> well, gotta win an election for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. First oh. become mayor. Yeah. Then <laughs> grow as much cannabis <laughs> as you want. <laughs> John, you said you had a good one. Uh, yeah, so this week is the Legacy Cup. Our uh, Legacy Cup this year is being headlined by Lupe Fiasco. So all week I've been thinking about Lupe Fiasco <laughs> and like what my favorite songs are and just like how I haven't thought about him like a lot. But then like when you do, it's like, oh, man. From, like, my point of being conscious to now, Lupe Fiasco has always been there. <laughs> Just, like, as, like, were you a figure in the background. Were you man. in at, like, the Superstar hit single with mm. Matthew Santos? Yes. St. Paul Native? And then, like, Kick Push. Um, Early. <laughs> Just like all of the, yeah, all, he was in a bunch of video games. If you guys remember back in the day, he was in Madden's, he was in some 2Ks, like, because oh, he made wow. music like that. So wow. I was like, man. Like, this dude is, like, culturally very, like, out there and involved. And it's just super cool. And one of those people, it's, like, been in music forever. Don't People don't really, not a massive. But, like, like your parents, like, superstar. You know, you're not even your, your an artist. artist. An artist, mm. artist who is really true to this. Uh, yeah, super cool to just have been thinking about him all week. And my favorite song was, um, what was the one? Not Superstar. The show goes on. The show goes on. Yeah. I was singing this. My show goes on. Oh, now we're setting up, setting up at the Legacy Cup. Honestly. And we're just the, singing it. <laughs> the amount of, like, high school girls basketball videos I edited about 20 years ago <laughs> as a high schooler to Show Goes On. Or, like, I use Lupe. All over oh, Island. All over football, everywhere. basketball, yeah. hockey. I put Lupe everywhere. Yeah. Really? Like 2009, 2010. I was a well liked hip hop. It's artist. like, mm. it's real. It's all uh, striving for a championship music mm. is what he makes. Yeah. And so, I don't know. I'm excited to see him. So now. you're hoping I to, hope I can you're, ask. You're hoping to talk to him tomorrow. Yeah. I, I really hope I can. I'm trying to find good questions like good high thoughts if you guys have any to uh ask lupe fiasco tomorrow i'm trying to ask him three questions if i can because uh we'll be right by where he's hanging out all day <laughs> <laughs> nothing like a captive eye yeah. <laughs> gotta ask him whether he prefers dab the barrier cherry freeze <laughs> <laughs> like, dude what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> no you don't understand last week yeah hey, did you see the podcast no, man we have, like legacy lemon and some other okay. oh yeah you're dropping new flavors at yeah legacy cup. at legacy cup for like yeah i think cool. you guys might get to see them tonight if you come in the industry oh okay. hell yeah. Cool. yeah i'm bringing the beverages oh let's go yeah, yeah we'll swap a bunch all right yeah <laughs> bring like four bags okay no when you say bags it'll be like <laughs> yeah the, the, the big the, the waterfall bags yeah uh, so uh low dose high effect uh kick push what do you got all right guys so i have perhaps I, some might call it a TV show recommendation, but I think it's more of like a cultural awakening that I want to turn people on to. Mm. <laughs> Do you guys know what mom talk is? Unfamiliar. I, okay. I've been hearing more about moms, but I'm not sure I know what mom talk is. I don't know. Much I about hear talks. Jordan, our producer, getting very excited about this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know about excited. Checking his pulse. All right. So, so I'm going to tell you about mom talk and, and why I would recommend that you check out the show. The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. Now, Mom Talk was a group of moms that got together and started making TikTok videos, dancing, whatever, you know. They became influencers, and then all of a sudden it came out, they were swinging. Yes. And also, perhaps doing a decent amount of ketamine. Um, and so that, like, broke it apart because these were a bunch of moms that were Mormons. and like, how could they have done this? And so they did what naturally any person would do, which is they cashed in, and they turned that situation into a tv show reality that, tv show yeah so they've now gotten back together after all these swinging allegations wow. and you get to see them just like live their lives mm -hmm. some of them are still very deeply committed mormons other of them not at all and and you get to see this blend of 
these eight women coming together. Uh, I described it to my wife as the real housewives, but they're all like 20. Um, they're young. They're all very the real young. housewives of Providence, Utah. Are they in Utah? Utah yeah. they, they are, oh, yeah. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Deep in the heart of it. Interesting. And, um, yeah, so I, all of season one is out on Hulu now. You can stream all of it just like I did in just a mere, mere like three days. Um, Be and like I Tanner. Would, I would highly encourage people to, especially if you're into like trashy TV of any I sort. I saw one clip. And I did watch it like five times yeah. on the internet this weekend. Yeah, <laughs> oh, the father I, reveal. I'd recommend no. taking. Oh, I'd God. recommend taking some dabbler berries before you yeah, watch. Yeah, definitely quite a few. Um, <laughs> but wow, is it is it dramatic? So um, I never really get a chance to recommend people TV shows, especially not this type. Um, but if you're looking for something to put on, you're looking for a guilty pleasure. Secret Lives of Mormon Wives on YouTube or excuse me on Hulu. Check it out for sure. We didn't make it through one episode because I was like, I'm not enjoying uh, no, this. No, no. So, so, <laughs> all right. And, and the thing is, Tanner, I love trashy shit. No, no. So you hate Taylor, right? Because you got through just part of episode one. You got to power through because the relationships <laughs> oh that come out of it are insane. You get to see women just like throw things and freak out oh, over just Mormons? like nothing. Yeah, over nothing. Um you also see a lot just of just like <laughs> very interesting relationship dynamics of like someone who went to a show like a, a juggalos show in mm. Vegas and their husband like showing up and being like this is grounds for divorce and just like the different perspective wow. it, kind of giving the side of the I can't spoil, it. I can't spoil right yeah. it go yeah. check it out don't be like Jordan power through episode one I can't watch all eight hours of it and just uh, I don't know. I, Turn off your brain. I, I, I love, I I love this high thought, and I appreciate you bringing this to yeah. the, the greater Minnesota community. You're yeah. welcome, guys. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Jordan, do you have a high thought that you want to share with the Northern Lights community today? Something you've just been thinking about while smoking, chatting I've, about with I've people? really been pondering um, the whole premise of uh, driving, and like Ooh, we... Okay. We park on the driveway and we drive on the parkway. <laughs> what the fuck, guys? What the fuck is fuck? happening? I don't know. We're going to have an expert in language mm. on a future episode <laughs> and just be like, welcome. Can we ask you questions? Like, why is English just this why? way? Yeah. Did You didn't do this, but who did? <laughs> future interview. Are you a, a, a linguist? A, a, an, an anthologist? Are you a language expert? Come on. We want to talk to you. Jordan has questions We for want you. you. Yeah. Steve at <laughs> mncanvascollege.org. <laughs> Send those emails in today. But if you're still listening, thank you for supporting the Doobie yeah. Dabbler. Thank you for supporting the Legacy Cup. Thank you for supporting Garrison Hempfest. I mean, that was that was only a month ago, but it feels like forever wow, ago. It does, yeah. And, uh, and thank you for su supporting this podcast. We're back for another full season. We'll be on through May. And if you're interested in getting involved, honestly, reach out. I do have an email address. You, you might have my number. Uh, Steve at MinnesotaCannabisCollege.org. And thanks for being here, guys. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Super we, good episode today. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, thanks to the Doobie Dabbler, as always. Excuse me, the Dabbler Depot for Dabbler having Depot. us here. The, the Dabbler Depot studio. But shout out to Doobie Dabbler. Yeah, shout out to the Doobie good Dabbler. Time. We'll be back in your feeds. We'll be back on YouTube in just a week. Guys, I'm so excited to be able to say that again. We're back on the regular. In the meantime, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, LinkedIn, YouTube. Definitely subscribe. We'll be dropping some extra clips every so often so make sure to hit that subscribe button hit that little bell too it does something i'm yes. not hip give with us a like it goes, Leave us ding. A comment. it goes ding ding yeah and drop yeah. the like that's yeah. for sure that's yeah. for sure but truly guys thank you so much for watching and we'll be back in uh just about a week thank you all thank you Northern Lights is a Minnesota Cannabis College production. This episode was produced by me, Tanner Barris, and by Steve Eigenman and Jordan Wick. Production assistance from Marcus Harkins, Shayna Payton, and John Barty. Video and audio recording at the Dabbler Depot studio by Jordan Wick. The information provided in this podcast does not, and is not intended to, constitute legal advice, but is instead for general information purposes only. No listener should act solely on the basis of information provided without first seeking advice from their own legal counsel. The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of the Minnesota Cannabis College. Please listen responsibly.